What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I am your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We are going to be discussing the first footage of Thor Love and Thunder. Brian, we talked about it last week. Um, but we didn't get to put we didn't get to put it out, but um, let's talk about the Thor Love and Thunder. We saw we saw we were, you know, everybody's been pretty much talking for the last two, three months about where is this trailer, where is this trailer? We want to see what's going on. <laughs> and finally, we get a trailer. I've seen the trailer a few times, Brian. And as you said last time, it felt a bit incomplete. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy the trailer because we're seeing a sort of arc for Thor. And as we said before, Thor was the guy I thought, and I can, you know, I'll debate it with anyone. He was the one that lost. He lost a lot. Um. So... Brian, what were your impressions of the first footage that you've seen um, for Thor Love and Thunder? Um, and what did you think about it? What are your expectations? So what we mean by incomplete is it was the length of a teaser, but it didn't feel like it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, first off, I love the visuals. You know... I went back and watched Ragnarok again recently, which I know you and I are kind of a little lower on than than the consensus. But it reinforced my appreciation for the trailer for this movie because I felt like the visuals of Olympus, some of the shots, even of just that first shot of Thor running through his youth and then growing up, I was like, Taika stepped up his his kind of his 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 cinematography game. Like I was excited mm-hmm. by what I saw. The yeah. shot, even the shot of New Asgard, even the stuff where he's clearly winking at you with some of the humor, yeah. it just looks elevated. So I'm excited to see what this film looks like because what I saw looked like. What I mean by incomplete is the entire narrative of Thor in this trailer all points to a but, right? Everything is like, I need to find myself. My superheroing days are over, but. Yeah. And then you don't get what comes after that? The trailer just skips to the glamour shot of Natalie Portman as the mighty Thor and the trailer ends. So we have predicted or surmised that we might see something at the end of Doc Strange 2 that connects us into Thor. I am still holding out hope we will and that it might actually be this teaser plus another 45 to 50 seconds because it just feels to me like this was edited in a way that removed everything between Thor's or the narrator and the final shot. He's playing with people's emotions when he showed this trailer. Fun. Put a smile on your face. The second half of that is going to be And you got an inkling of that in this trailer of him visiting that big uh, uh, Balagar, the the god that's slain. That's literally a shot from a comic in Thor. Literally, that is already yes, already sets up uh, something in Thor that he may have to get involved because it's not just happening to. It just didn't happen to this guy. It happened to others. And obviously, Gore the God Butcher is uh, um, behind it all. Um, so we saw the happy parts, and I think that other forty-five seconds is the 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 the, the more dramatic stuff. Um, I predict, and Brian, I think you agreed last time we spoke about it. Natalie Portman's character is going to be Dunzo. There's going to be a, a lot of dramatic stuff happening. Thor would have lost more friends and perhaps we'll get our introduction to Hercules, his best friend in the comics. So your thoughts. Yeah. Let's go to a couple of these things. So you're absolutely right. So things that have come out 
around this teaser being released, um, confirmation that the core storyline of Jason Aaron's The Mighty Thor will be featured in this movie and that it will include Jane Foster having her cancer. Um, and the way that worked in the comics, just so people who don't, didn't read it don't understand, but she has this cancer, which I believe they will retcon to make the ether responsible. Super so fun, yeah. That would be the logical connection to what she's done before in this series. But it is the ham. So it's basically the hammer that kind of that deems her worthy. And when she takes up the hammer, and you do see she's holding the fractured hammer in the trailer, yeah. the one that Hela shattered. It's been reassembled, but it's not like seamless. Yeah. She becomes Thor, but as she becomes Thor, it that act eradicates all toxicity from her body, good and bad. Mm -hmm. So it basically puts the cancer like in a weird way, like the cancer's still there. It can't remove that because that's part of her. But it removes like the chemo, it removes like all the treatment and it like obscures the pain. So she doesn't feel it. Mm -hmm. But as she's Thor, it accelerates her dying. So she can only be come Thor a limited number of times before she actually perishes faster. So that apparently is going to be in this movie, which you can't silly that. Like, I don't care what kind of sense of humor Taika has. That is not something he's going to play around with, right? That's a very serious thing. And I think it also leads to a very personal way for Thor and Thor to meet because technically Natalie Portman will be a god when she's in Thor form, which will put her on the radar of the God Butcher. So I love those stakes without even knowing exactly how they're going to pull it off. I love the, the potential of those stakes. And, you know, Natalie Portman's a really small person, but shouts to her for putting in the work. She looks yeah. really good in the, in the yeah. costume. Yeah. Um, if that is the case of Gore being somewhat responsible for Jane's death, let's say, I would assume that that happens at least second act or, or, or late second act. Um, I'm going to guess I Thor manages to stave off her death from... Or I'm going to guess to the extent that Natalie Portman's character dies in this movie, it's going to be from being Thor and the cancer. Some act of mm -hmm. sacrifice. That'd be more my guess. Brian, we discussed this last time. Um, having someone like Christian Bale on, 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 on a project and hearing nothing, especially when it comes to like MCU stuff, I, although an MCU does a good job of keeping things tight but we've, we've heard absolutely nothing of his performance um we've gotten a glimpse of what he's gonna look like thanks toys um but nothing of about his performance does this concern you no actually it it, it it kind of is the other way it's like this source of intrigue with this movie that i think is so underrated uh, as you said, this is a guy who, again, doesn't do silly, doesn't mail in a performance, inhabits whatever character he does, is a master of transformation, as we know. And this is a guy who swore off this genre a decade ago, said he was done. And so I just feel like it had to have been something special to get him back to the table yeah. and to be a villain, no less. Uh, and, and I would say, like, we haven't really seen Kristen Bale go full villain since early in his early in his mainstream career. You know, American Psycho, Shaft. I mean, that, those were movies where he cut loose as a bad guy. We haven't really mm -hmm. seen that for two decades from him. So I'm pretty excited to see what he has in his bag. Because, like I said, I, it's not going to be bad. And I just can't see it being silly, which makes me want to believe that it's something pretty epic. I hope so, man. I hope so. Um, 
again, if Marvel can pull some, I, and I think I, I made a prediction last time we spoke that this movie may possibly be Marvel's best movie. Um, definitely top three. It can get there. I think there's a possibility for it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's talk about Olympus quickly because we got yes. a shot of we got a shot of Russell Crowe's back. Yes, on Olympus, as I mentioned, Olympus looks great. What's your over under on scenes that Russell Crowe lasts before Gore takes him out? Because I think there's probably like a ninety eight percent chance Zeus is getting eliminated oh, yeah. by the God Butcher, right? Oh that, yeah. <laughs> no more than 15, 20 minutes, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a couple good scenes. <laughs> but, but, I'm interested in seeing yeah. how he plays it. But a couple good scenes, but that's the segue for Hercules. Son of Zeus. And, Again. And rumors that he's in the trailer, but he's been edited out. Of yes. One shot with Thor and Yes. Thor. This is the sort of stuff that, like, you know, gets you gets your blood going, you know, gets your blood pumping in, 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 with excitement to what they're going to do next. I hope that Hercules shows up in this film. It makes sense because um, Hercules has his arc. There's a bunch of storylines in there um, that are very huge, especially with Hercules. Um, and it also brings possibilities for if Thor, if this is Thor, uh, Hem, Hemsworth's last movie for a while, there are certain things, events that happen in the, in the future with Hercules that brings Thor uh, back. So there's 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 room to play with that character. I don't think it's his last film. Um, Hemsworth, of all the lead guys, has said, "I will play this role until they Thor's rip long, it yeah. from my." lifeless fingers and i i think if this movie does the kind of box office that it ought to do yeah i just can't see them allowing him to exit stage left after this i think you're right though you, you your, your call that this could be marvel's best movie so how can it be marvel's best movie i think the the path i see for that is Hemsworth has already played this role very differently, right? He's shown the range that a lot of these leads have not had to. So I think we're expecting him to deliver, right? If they if they stick the landing on the Jane Foster storyline and kind of complete her arc in an emotional way, that's definitely going to be a step in the right direction. Christian Bale does what I think he can do. That will definitely put you on the path. Marvel struggles with the villain sometimes, right? So we get a great villain that can do it. The introduction to the mythological characters and Hercules is a big one. And I think honestly, like my one of my big hopes is the storylines they're basing this movie on, if it limits the silliness, if it limits the goofiness by like 10 to 15% relative to what was in Ragnarok, I think we're in a pretty strong place. That would be sort of like how you get there. It's like I think if re-watching Ragnarok, it reminded me of like, yeah, it's, it's, there's, a, there's moments where it's like a little slapsticky. You see Hulk starting to kind of go a little silly in this movie. Like you see the seeds of what then happens later on in the Avengers movie. So it's like, if we can kind of weed that stuff out and then you get the, the emotional depth. I mean, look, you're going to have Hemsworth who you were calling that he's going to get nominated for an Oscar for playing Hulk Hogan. So we'll see if he acts to that level in this movie. You got Oscar winner, Natalie Portman, Oscar winner, Christian Bale, Oscar winner, Russell Crowe. It's there, man. The formula's there. To, I mean, Taika's obviously Oscar nominated multiple times. Like, that, that's how you can get to that level. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think uh, about this first trailer for Thor, Love, and Thunder. Do you agree there will, there, there will be a second half? And we're thinking that we'll probably get that at the end of uh, Doctor Strange 2, a la what they did with No Way Home, um, and introduced uh, a trailer for Doctor Strange 2. Um, but yeah, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, um, share with your friends, 
Uh, Brian, any last words? No, other than it was weird. I, I went back and rewatched, like I said, because I showed my little girl the first Thor movie. That then led to rewatching some of the other Thor movies. I got me hyped for Thor 4. It's kind of been a little bit um, like just kind of humming in the background as I've waited for Doc Strange 2. But like, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for Thor 4 and like seeing the teaser. Like, yeah, I think I think by the time we get to July, I think we're, I think we're gonna be pretty oh, yeah. stoked. I think, and we'll see more, obviously. Um, this, there's a fascinating arc in this film. Um, the depressed Thor, the mighty Thor, the depressed Thor, the, the Thor getting back in shape. <laughs> um, is The movie's going to be fun. It's going to have some emotional depth. There's going to be some drama. Uh, hopefully the villain is good. I think if they hit on, the, on that, um, I think we're going to get a fabulous film. Uh yeah, that's our show. Um, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.